Hey everyone, in today's video I'll be going over an original God of War themed build. And what I mean by that is I'll be using weapons that have the most resemblance from the first few God of War games and not the newer Nordic one. Some really nice things about this is it's not the exact same God of War build that everyone creates using the exact same weapons. And honestly, this one seems to hit a lot harder than the others as well. So if you find this video enjoyable, I have tons of other build related videos on my channel. If you want to check those out afterwards. So don't forget to subscribe for more weekly content, cause if you don't... Well, saying all of that, let's dive into the build starting off with Kratos' most iconic weapons, the Blades of Chaos. Instead of going with the magma blades that everyone uses for God of War builds, I decided to go with the Serpent God's Curved Swords. They're the second closest looking next to the magma blades, but these can do so much more damage because you can place different variations and Ashes of War on them for a better freedom of play. Also, these weapons just clap people left and right like it's nothing. Now the best damage type for us to use is the magic variation and on top of that the magic ashes of war are stupid strong. Like even though I'm using a curved sword, the ash of war itself can hit for thousands of damage. Personally I like to go with the carrion grandeur just because of its complete opposite to the curved sword. The attack takes a bit of time to charge up but when you let it rip that one attack will take a huge chunk of health away. Versus curved swords that attack rapidly hitting their target a various amount of times for their damage. I mean, you can always go with Sword Dance or any other Ash of War if you want something a bit more basic but still decently effective. And for our other sword, we can place Bloodhound Step to match Kratos' high mobility. In addition, it's just really good for dodging crazy attacks like Malena's Waterfall Special. We've all died from this countless amount of times just trying to basic roll out of it, but there's no chance of us escaping. And not just with her, but other bosses in general. So because we got two curved swords, we can toss on the Rotten Wing Talisman that's going to increase our damage with rapid attacks to really melt down whoever we're fighting. And the last, last thing about these swords is they passively have this buff where after you kill an enemy, you'll regain 2.5% of your max health plus an additional 25 HP. It's nothing crazy, but having a passive is pretty nice. Now for the God of War's second weapon, the Blade of Olympus. And we got that fully covered with the Dark Moon Greatsword. I think we can all agree that this is the closest looking and functioning weapon in Elder Ring to his own. The best part with this sword though is its Ash of War that does good damage with medium range, low cost of mana consumption, and it passively has a little bit of freeze build, so there's always that chance of you proccing frost on an enemy for even more damage. And this weapon explains why our build is more magic focused because of its stats required to use it. But it's not a bad thing at all because magic damage is easily buffable. Like using the magic scorpion charm is going to add an extra 12% damage to all of our magic attacks, which is pretty much all of our damage. But back to the Blade of Olympus. The special attack for it just charges the weapon up so all of our regular heavy attacks now send out this wave of frost slash magic damage at our targets and it only costs mana to charge the weapon up, so afterwards, those heavy attacks only consume stamina instead, which is extremely nice for durability. Now the last weapons we can use, cause we're gonna have every slot filled up, is the Arms of Sparta. The best choices we got for these are the Partisan Spear with the Ur Tree Great Shield to match the look, and they function extremely well for safer play. Like you can hide behind the shield and poke enemies down, 
deflect magic attacks, which is very fun and powerful to do so, and the Spear's Ash of War for even more damage. Again, we're going to go with the magic variation for the most damage possible, and with its Ash of War, I've chosen to go with Ice Spear, just because it's got really good damage, decently fast casting speed, and it places a frost effect on enemies extremely quick. Not just taking a chunk of their health away, but also making that enemy take 20% increased damage for 30 seconds. So you're probably thinking, what's the point of the Dark Moon Greatsword special if this does the same thing? This Ash of War costs more mana to use, so we can't use it as much as we'd like to, it doesn't hit as hard, and the Dark Moon attack is easier to land with its wider area of effect. Again, all of these weapons work amazingly well, so there's never a wrong choice for when you want to change weapons. You have regained the blade of Olympus. Let the rage of Sparta prove. And if anything, the shield works fantastic with the greatsword being able to block attacks, because it's a great shield, so it'll be good at that, and having the sword charged up to send out ranged attacks really quickly. Just another good combo to mention. With all of this talk about special attacks and Ashes of War, we can add on the Shard of Alexander to increase all of their damage by an extra 15% to make them even more punishing. The last thing for us is a Sacred Seal, and I'm going with the Golden Order Seal just because it weighs absolutely nothing. There's no special Sacred Seal to use, cause we're only using this to cast Golden Vow to increase our damage by 15% and our damage negation by 10% for 80 seconds. It kinda just matches the whole God part in God of War. I'm a god boy. Now we got a lot of weapons equipped, so it would be wise to use the Great Jar's arsenal to increase our max equip load by 19% so that we can still fast roll with everything on. Next up, we got the Flask of Wondrous Physic. The best tiers we can use for this is the Magic Shrouding tier to increase all of our magic damage by 20%, and the Thorny Crack tier, which works in the exact same way as the Rotten Wing Talisman, increasing our damage with successive attacks, and both of these tiers last for 3 minutes, which is a lot of time for any given fight. Now before I get into the minimum stats required, let's take a better look at our character. To match the original Kratos look, I'm going with the Rotten Duelist Greaves, the Guardian Bracers, and no helmet or chest piece. For his looks and facial features, I'll put a link to another video really going into depth for all of that. And none of these offer any buffs except for the Rotten Duelist Greaves, which makes enemies more aggro towards you, so I don't think that's really a buff, but hey, anything for the looks. Now for the minimum stats required, you'll need at least 30 strength, 12 dex, 38 Intelligence, and 25 Faith to use all the weapons and spells effectively. Afterwards, I'd recommend putting majority of your points into Intelligence to further increase your damage. I'm also going to put links in the description down below for all the gear I'm using, if you want more information on them and where you can find them all for yourselves. Well, that's everything for today's video. I'd also like to give a big thanks to the members of my channel for supporting me on my videos and the future ones to come. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.